Hey everybody, today I've got a little bit of a different project for you. Instead of being just a circuit or just a stomp box, we're actually going to combine a transducer with the circuit to create a sustainer. You may have heard sustainers used by The Edge from U2 or Ed O'Brien from Radiohead or the likes of Steve Vai or many others. The concept of a sustainer is that you take your signal from your pickup, you amplify it, and then you run it through a low impedance transducer that creates an electromagnetic field that keeps the string vibrating infinitely. And so this is something that I've wanted to do for a long time, but in the DIY world, there aren't any really good systems. The commercial systems like Sustainiac or Fernandez work really great, but they cost hundreds of dollars. And a lot of the inexpensive systems that you find are really nothing more than just a really poorly put together circuit and a coil of wire around a single magnet. So I actually bought a commercial Sustainiac system and reverse engineered it, which you can find on my webpage. But I have since created my own design files and my own instructions and my own circuit for a DIY sustainer system that will perform just as good as the commercial systems. So this video is all about winding the driver coil and putting it together to be used with one of my circuits. It can work with the Sustainiac clone circuit that I reverse engineered. It'll work with the Fermata circuit. It will also work with the with two other circuits that I have in the works, but that I haven't released just yet. So stay tuned for those. Anyway, stick around and I'll show you how to go from kit to a fully functioning driver with minimal fuss and effort. So here we've got everything that's in the kit. We've got two loops of wire. Each of these have been pre-measured to be approximately four ohms of resistance. We have got the slugs that go inside of our bobbins after we wind our bobbins. We have the cover that goes over the bobbins. We have the base plate that the, uh, the, the coils will get soldered into. You can see that there's actually... Um, instructions for how the joints get or for what gets soldered where. There are the steel poles that will actually go into the cover after we're done that will help bridge the magnetic gap between the bobbins. We have our two magnets that will help provide the magnetic field. We have a spacer that uh, goes on top of the PCB and I will show how that gets done here in just a little bit. There is a bobbin winding tool. Now in the kits, I've been providing 3D printed ones because they're faster and cheaper to produce. This was the very first prototype that I made though out of some leftover steel I had and just some plastic rod. There are two pieces of surgical tubing that will be the springs basically for mounting the driver. There are the screws that go into the number six threaded holes on the PCB. There is shielded two conductor wire. This is about a foot of length, which should be plenty. There is enough uh, copper shielding tape, adhesive copper shielding tape to go all the way around the driver. And there is also bobbin tape, which is enough to go all the way around the driver. So this here is everything that will be needed in order to make a fully functional driver. And we'll show you how in just a minute. To start, we're going to mount our magnets onto our PCB. You can see on the PCB here that I've got these white rectangles that indicate where the magnet should go. And the magnets are a little bit smaller than that white rectangle. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to try and keep them centered top to bottom, but kind of squished in to the inside side there. Okay. And so what we need to do is we need to mount our magnets on here so that we have one of them with north facing up and one of them with north facing down. And in order to, find, to figure out how to do that, the easy way is to just bring your magnets together. And when they stick together like this, it means that they have opposite polarities on their face. So it doesn't really matter which is north and which is south. 
all that matters is that one is facing the opposite direction of the other. So when they're stuck together side by side like this, you know that they are in the right orientation. Now we can fasten this down to the PCB using um, glue or epoxy, but in this case I'm just going to use some permanent double-sided tape here that I got from uh, just from the store. It doesn't want to tear very easily, but I just take a little piece of it there, give a nice firm press so that my magnet stays in place, and we do the same with the other magnet. Ugh. There's our tape. Now this magnet's going to be attracted to the other one, so you got to keep them in place there, but there we go. That is the first step, and we are now ready to start winding our bobbins. So here I am at my metal lathe, which is where I wind my coils for pickups and such, and you don't have to use this. You can use a pickup winding machine, you can use an electric drill, you can wind it by hand, whatever you have available to you and whatever you're comfortable with. So the way we're going to start is we're going to take our bobbin winder and we've removed the screw and the washer and we're just going to slip our bobbin over the top of it like that and we're going to replace the screw and the washer back in the end but we're not going to tighten them really tight. The only purpose of this screw and washer is to keep the bobbin from flying off while we're winding it. All the torque is going to be provided by this central piece. And then um, I what I did with my wire was I wound it around a soda can so that this provides some weight and also kind of a guide for the wires that comes up while we're winding. And this is just going to go on the ground um, directly below where I'm going to be winding. And then I'm going to use my hands to guide the wire up as it winds around the coil. So I'm going to take um, my bobbin winder here and I'm actually going to wind a little bit of the beginning of my wire around the shaft of um, my bobbin winder and what that's going to do is that's going to give me my extra lead wire that I'm going to need um, for soldering. It's going to also provide a little more resistance to the twisting when we are um, winding the coil and so I'm just going to go like that. I'm going to put this in my chuck here such that the um, wire will pass under the steel rod which is my guide rod and I've got these two stops that are just going to keep the wire from hopping off the end of the bob in either direction. And then I'm going to actually um, wind my coil with just a couple of wraps by hand first. Uh oh. Oh. That came off, so I'm just going to wrap that around there again. What you want to do when you're doing these wraps is just get enough on there so that it can start to withstand the tension from being wound. It's only it only takes a few wraps and I am winding this particular coil so that it goes in the normal direction for a lathe, which means it's rotating this way. The other coil, though, is going to get wound um, going the opposite direction because I need the two coils to be reverse wound. So now that I've got a couple of wraps of wire here, I'm going to put my can down on the floor and just kind of let the wire come up off of it. But you want to make sure that you're not letting it get um, tangled. If it tangles, you need to stop immediately and get it untangled, otherwise you'll break the wire. I have learned this myself. I'm using this clothespin with some felt wrapped around it and just tacked in place. This is going to be a wire tensioner. It's just going to go like that, and it's just going to help provide some tension on the wire as we're winding it without, without creating a friction burn um, on my fingers. So. We're just going to start really slow, okay? We're just going to start really slow until we kind of get things established. And we're going to slowly work our way from one end of the bobbin to the other, trying to create a pretty even coil. I mean, you're not going to be like an auto-traverse machine, so there will be some variation, and that's just fine. 
the keys here are that you want to try and make it so that the coil is um, pretty evenly distributed across the bobbin and that it is wound with a reasonable amount of tension. You don't want too much tension because you can break your wire that way and you don't want to do that. And so we're just going nice and easy from end to end. With this being a pre-measured amount of wire, we're just going to wind until we run out. Okay. If you want to go faster, you're taking matters into your own hands and you may very well break it. You, there, there's only about 250 or 300 winds of wire on here. And so it takes far less time to wind it nice and slow than it does to try and go fast and break the coil a few times. So there we've got ourselves a nicely wound coil here. With this last wind, we're just gonna make sure that it comes around nicely. And now we're ready to go ahead and remove this guy. But because we're doing reverse wound, reverse polarity coils, we need to make sure that we keep track of which is our start winding and our end winding so that we can make sure that we are, um, oh, there goes the camera so that we can make sure that we are starting and stopping correctly when wiring these in parallel. Undo my wire there. So, I always, I, I just designate the end of my winding to be the top. So this is gonna be the top right here. This guy is going to be the bottom of my coil. We can always trim excess wire off later. And I'm going to use a pen or a Sharpie to indicate top and bottom of my coil to make it easy, easy when we're winding or when we're wiring rather. Okay, so here I am up in my electronics work area and I've got my two bobbins that I've just wound and I've also got my base plate with the magnets put on it and I've got my two conductor shielded wire that I have already stripped back and I have tinned each of the ends. Okay, so we're going to need those for this step. So the first thing that we're going to do is actually not with that guy. We're going to take each of our coils and we're going to make sure that we have continuity with them. So what we want to do is we want to take a little bit from each end, still keeping track of which is top and bottom, and we're going to remove the enamel coating. And to do that, I've actually got a little piece of sandpaper here. It's a very thin enamel coating, so you don't have to worry about it too much. You just kind of use your thumb to press it in and scrape it a little bit. Now that I've got the top squared away, I'm going to tape them out of the way. And now I'm going to do the same for the bottom here. And all we want to do is just make sure that we have somewhere in the ballpark of 4 ohms of resistance. Um, with the pre-measured wire that I provide, I actually do provide a little extra wire just in case um, something breaks or to provide a little extra length for soldering um, everything into the base plates. So if you have everything exactly as it should be, you'll probably have something a little more like four and a half ohms. So I'm gonna take my multimeter here and I'm going to see what I've got. This measures at 4.6 ohms, which is exactly what we want. So I'm going to put my tape back on the bottom here also, just so that I'm keeping track of what is what. And we'll do the same for our other coil real quickly. There we go. So that one is 4.1 or 4.2 ohms. That little bit of mismatch is fine. It's not going to be that big of a deal. This is a pretty tolerant design of those types of things. So um, we are now done with the multimeter for a little bit. So what we're going to do is take our base plate. And if I flip this over, you'll see that I have A, S, B, E, white, black, B, S, A, E. A and B just 
indicates which indicates one coil or the other, and S means start and E means end. So what we're going to do is because we wound these both bottom to top and in opposite directions, then one coil start is going to come in here and the other coil's end winding is going to come here and that's going to be connected to our white wire. And same thing with our black, except in this case it happens to be red. I didn't know what color the conductors were going to be before I placed the order for my, uh, for my boards. So this is where we can either choose to glue our bobbins down or epoxy them down. Again, I'm just going to use some of this double stick tape that is really hard to tear off. And I'll put it down there. And then this is the end winding because it's the top. So if I call this coil A, A end is going to be at the very on this side, which is going to be up here. So I will take A end. I'm going to stick it down through here. And then if we look over here, a start is at the very top, or which is now the very bottom, and I'm going to stick him down through here. Okay, we're just getting these threaded through right now, it's not a big deal, plus we've got plenty of extra wire that we can pull through when the time has come for that. But before we actually put the bobbin onto the magnet, we are going to put the steel slugs in. The reason we're going to put the steel slugs in before we put it on the magnet is because the way the magnetic field is created will actually help the steel slugs or the steel slugs will actually help kind of center us on the bobbin. Okay, so it's going to be a little weird here. We pull our wire through. We're going to just set them on there. Oh, get out of there wire. You're messing me up. Okay, and then we're going to whoop, get those out of the way. We're going to make sure that it is lined up. Sorry if you see my head there. Just make sure that it's lined up. We're going to give it a little press down. Mm, that's not holding very well. We may need to end up gluing this. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that off. And I'm going to remove this, and I'll be right back with some glue. Okay, so I've just got regular old super glue here, and I'm just going to put a little bit down on this magnet, and what that's going to do is it's going to hold everything in place so that it can't move around. Make sure the wires are out of the way, and then put it down. You want to make sure that this is horizontal and so that the inside of the bobbin comes to the inside of the magnet there. And you'll just need to hold it down for a little bit till that glue sets up. That glue has set up. And so I'm going to pull that wire through nice and tight. Pull this wire through nice and tight like that fantastic we'll actually take care of soldering this in a little bit so we're going to take our other coil we're going to put down some super glue again just a nice little thin layer here go ahead and get our tape out of the way there's that that's our top one is the long one so I'm gonna take another quick peek the start wire is the bottom one is going to come up here so the bottom wire goes there which is this wire feed that guy through which means that the other wire is going to come down into this hole like that going to put our slug in there, 
or our core, whatever you want to call them. Making sure that the wires are not interfering with the, with the bobbin. We're going to, whoop, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> it's important to make sure that the flat side of the bobbins face the inside of the driver. Okay, that's the way that they're made to go. And in fact, I probably should have moved this guy even just a little further onto my... All right, and now we pull our wires through to cinch them up. There's that, there's that. Pull this guy through. Uh-oh, that glue hasn't set completely yet. Okay, we're just gonna make sure that that's held together. Now, you'll notice that one of my slugs is actually a little short. That's because this is one of my prototype ones that um, <laughs> I cut just a little extra off of. But the thing is that it doesn't, it's not a huge deal because the, the magnet is still going to send the magnetic field up through the slug and will have plenty of strength. So now that we've got everything put through like this, we're going to come in and we are going to solder these guys in. Let me get my glue out of the way. The enamel that's on here will melt away when we solder it, so all we have to do is just heat it up for a little bit and then touch the solder to it, and that enamel will, will just go right away. But we'll be able to check that by, um, by using our multimeter. So I'm just going to feed some wire in here, let the enamel kind of bubble off. Okay, and now we're going to use our multimeter for continuity again. And because these are wired in parallel, we should see about two ohms of resistance between these two points. We've got 2.2, 2.3 ohms, which means that everything is wired successfully. We can trim these wires. And now all we have to do, let me get this out of the way. Now all we have to do in order for all the electrical stuff is to um, wire in our leads. Now our shield is not going to connect to the PCB anywhere. It's actually going to connect to the copper shield tape that we're going to put around the outside. And that's going to get wired to the ground of the guitar so that any... Um, electromagnetic signal from the copper tape um, doesn't get fed into our coils at all. So I'm just going to put my white and black in here. So it's actually white and red. With those soldered in, we're just going to make sure that they're not touching each other on the inside here, which they are not. So we're good there. Um, now, based on, depending on how you mount this into your guitar, um, you may want to use some kind of strain relief on this guy. Um, but that is kind of left up to you. You can put some hot glue around here. You can try and work a, a zip tie through somewhere, but you know, if you're not constantly yanking the thing in and out of a guitar, you're probably going to do fine just leaving it as it is.
So now what we're going to do is we are going to take our two tapes that we have. We've got copper tape and we've got bobbin tape. And this copper tape is actually a little wide, so you're going to want to trim that down. Just use some scissors to kind of cut it down in width a little bit. And there should be plenty of tape to get all the way around our coil and then some, okay? And the adhesive on the back of this coil is conductive, so um, we don't have to worry about uh, soldering over a seam or anything like that. Of course, with my lack of fingernails, one of the hardest things is just getting it started. We don't have to worry about the short to the wire because the wire is enamel coated. So as long as we make sure that we don't touch the magnets, then we're going to be just fine with this shielding. What the shielding does is the shielding actually prevents a lot of the electromagnetic field from the driver from getting back to the bridge pickup. So, uh oh, gotta be careful when it sticks to itself because this, the adhesive doesn't mess around. Um, and so, making sure that we have the driver shielded is really important for making sure that you're not introducing feedback or other kind of nastiness. Um, in your guitar system. So there we've got that. We are just going to solder him in there and then we'll wrap with bobbin tape. Ouch, that was a little hot. <laughs> Normally I would use something like a dental pick to take care of that. And now we're going to wrap with bobbin tape just to give it a nice clean look. It will also serve to um, insulate around that copper tape so that nothing accidentally shorts it. The coil is just a little bit wider than the bobbin tape, but it's not that big of a deal. We're just mostly doing this for the looks. Bobbin tape gives a nice clean finished look, but we're also going to have a cover, so it's not that big of a deal. There we go. We've got ourselves our driver. And now we can begin assembling the rest of it. So we're going to take this spacer and this spacer is going to come and fit down and around the magnets here. Okay. And then we'll put our cover on. There we go. And this cover will just come all the way down on top of the spacer, just like that. There we go. And then we're gonna take these two pole pieces and these two pole pieces are not just decorative, they also serve to bridge the magnetic gap between the, the two um, coils here because if you had strings in between these two coils, the magnetic field there is going to be weaker and so they wouldn't sustain as well. But putting these in allows the magnetic field to actually come further in towards the center. And with these guys, you may want to polish them up a little bit if that's your thing. You may also want to put some glue on them if 
you feel so inclined so that they don't move around or accidentally fall out, but they just kind of set in there. And there we have our driver. Mounting this in the guitar will be as simple as mounting any other pickup. Um, I've included some surgical tubing to act as a spring, but you can use regular springs. These screws are number six um, 32 thread, um, which is the standard fender single coil thread size. And um, you can mount this into a pickup ring, a pick guard, whatever, um, just the same way you would any other... Um, any other pickup. I've already threaded the um, I've already threaded the uh, the PCB so all you have to do is drive the screw through here. Let's see. Fix. Now another thing that should be mentioned is that the 3D printed nylon that uh, the covers and bobbins are made out of is a little bit fragile so you want to make sure that um, you paint it according to the instructions that were provided by Maurizio Nasso, who has been helping me a lot on this project. Um, it will not only make it look really nice, but it will also um, give a little more rigidity to these. These kind of have the, uh, the strength and texture of like a wood pulp type um, product. But any way you look at it, it's really super cool. These are really fantastic. And uh, I hope that you enjoy them as much as I have been enjoying this project. With that, you just need to wire this guy up to either um, something like the Sustaniac clone circuit that I reverse engineered, or my Fermata circuit, or um, I'm working on a couple other circuits that look to either add features or reduce complexity. Just, you know, your circuit of choice. I really do not recommend an LM386 based circuit. This is really best used with a Sustaniac or Fermata family circuit. Thanks for watching.